Welcome to the Pistons Fanatic. I am your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Currently, my daughter and I are coaching one of the best AU teams in the country. Well, Piston fans, free agency is in full swing, and already like 43 players have already been signed for over a one and a half billion dollars and I know you're frustrated probably many of you frustrated or even angry that our Detroit Pistons didn't make a big move but I'm here to tell you that um, we just have to have perspective of what's going on so first I want to mention that um, Harrison Barnes he signed before free agency even opened he signed for I think less than 20 million a year and also I, I think that we knew that um, Cam Johnson was already signed. These things, they're not supposed to be going on before free agency, but people have a really good idea about so many of these things. And I, it's likely that we knew the Nets had a deal in place and, and they were going to match any offer that we gave them. Another thing that I don't, I'm not sure that you're aware of, though, is that um, if you offer somebody, make, if we would have made him an offer yesterday, they have 24 hours to match, but the 24 hours does not start until after the five-day moratorium. So by then, if they went matched our offer, everybody would have been gone. There would have been no moves left probably to be made. I'm not sure that we could have done the Joe Harris deal or the Monte um, deal. So I just think that um, we did what we you know what we thought was best and I and I and I agree with it I'm just gonna tell you I know everybody probably thinks that I'm just um, a yes man or a suck up to Troy and even though I, I have no he has no influence over me I just have been a Piston fan for a long long time and I think that does give me some perspective I watched too many teams try to jump ahead and again the the Wizards are a great example they've been stuck in no man's land for ever and so I think that you know you can finish 10th or 8th, you know, every year for 10 years, and maybe you can feel good about that. I know Piston fans, after losing as many games as we've lost in the last three years especially, that you are really frustrated. So, but we are headed in the right direction. We have a lot of things to find out. But, yeah, again, you look at the Bulls. The Bulls made the big move. They they started signing some free agents. They got DeRozan, and, you know, then they made the – trade for Vucevic when they thought they were um, close enough with him. They, you know, they had Zach Levine, and they were paying those guys big money, and they thought he was going to be the answer, so they traded away Wendell Carter, who's a really good player, a young player was, and now he's you know better than Vucevic, and, and they traded away a bunch of draft picks. And so now, you know, especially it's not their fault that Alonzo Ball got hurt, but you look at the Nuggets. Again, I talked about this a while back, that they did the slow – you know, they let things marinate. They got the key cornerstone and Jokic, and then they added pieces, and, you know, they dra added pieces, draft picks and different players, and then they, you know, they developed a good team. And so we have to have that same patience, and I know it's really hard, but, I again, I, I'm going to tell you, I think we are going to be so much fun to watch this year. I think we are going to win more games than we did by far and I think I think you're going to be happy by the end of the year and the big thing is is so we have like I said this over and over again we have to find out who is going to be the star who's going to be in how you know how is this Sir Thompson is he going to be a quality starting wing in this league you know Kate and Ivy need to play together they didn't really get to we need to find out how good is Ivy going to be and we still won't know that after next year, but we're going to know way more than what we knew before this. So, um, you know, we don't know about Wiseman. Is Wiseman going to be on our team going forward? But we have to find out this year. we got to find out, can Stu shoot the three? Is he going to be, you know, a, a rotation player or even a starter? What are we going to do with Bagley? Is Livers even possibly a player? I'm not even seeing with our current roster how he's going to get minutes. So, to jump in and commit, you know, they signed um, Cam for lots of money, $108 million for four years. And like I would mentioned, he has um, only played average 56 games a year that he's played. He's been injured. He's 27. 
and he is a great player. I would have, you know, I got fired up, and I think part way I got, you know, I was buying the drinking the Kool Aid. I was hearing everybody talk about it and how he had this connection with Monty and stuff, but in reality, committing four years at that high of a price, you know, it's, it's almost thirty million a year that you know to pay a guy that's he's he's going to be a great role player he does fit our team he does play defense he does shoot the three but again when you consider the injuries and the cost of his contract and the fact that so if he's out there playing we we have to treat him like he's maybe not a superstar but he's still going to take up a lot of shots and you know need to play a lot of minutes and so is that going to hinder what we find out with the other players so we again we need to find out and we still should have like 60 million up to 60 million next year in cap space. So we, you know, we have Bogey has after this upcoming year, he's got that buyout that we can either pay him only 20 million, which is a, a bargain for him, or we can um, we can trade him, or we can buy him out for like two million. So Bagley will still owe uh, 12 and a half million for two more years. Kate is only three. 13.9 million, Ivy's 8 million, Duran's 4.5 million, which, what a bargain. Asur and Sasser together are only going to make about 10 million. So we're going to have so much cap space, and we will know so much more about our team um, going into next year. So um, let's talk about Monty Morris. So I'm excited about him. I Again, I don't know. I already, last episode, I, yes, yesterday, I talked about where is the minutes going to come from for our guards, even with Cade, Ivy, and Sasser and Burks, that's, I explained how that's going to take up not even enough minutes still for Sasser or Burks with Cade and Ivy playing like 32 minutes a game. Now we get Monty Morris and Monty Morris is a fabulous player. He is, he's 28 years old. He's 6'2". He's from Flint Beecher and he grew up loving um, the Spartans and the Pistons, but he ended up going to Iowa State. But he was Mr. Basketball at Flint Beecher. Flint Beecher won the state championship. They beat Trevor State St. Francis. They've had a lot of great teams, but he he is unselfish. He is, again, he is a Troy guy kind of guy. He loves to pass the ball, and he has a nickname, and I don't know exactly how to say the nickname. I count The Count of Bonte Assist to Turnover. I, I don't know how they say it. I would like to hear that. But he, the, the bottom line is he, every le- year, um, Monty Morris leads the NBA in assist to turnover ratio. And we know that last year, the games that we won, it, there was a huge difference whether we turned it over 16 times or, if, or more or less than 16 times. That gave us a chance to win. And if he's on the court, you're not going to turn the ball over. Every year, I mean, he has... Last year, he averaged 9.4 assists and 1.7 turnovers. And again, that ratio is was the best in the league last year. It's the best in the league most every year because it's like 8 to 1. And that is just out of this world. And um, he he is, like I said, unselfish. But not only that, but he, he, he shot, he's underrated. He's really underrated. He shot 48% from the field, but 38% on threes last year. And for his career... 39% on three. So there you go. There's another player. The biggest question with picking him up is that just seems like Killian's gone. But I, you know, I mean, of course, I think I shared, I don't, I don't think he has any trade value. We are committed to him for next year and then we, he'll be a restricted free agent. So we don't have to sign him, but it just really makes you wonder. But of course we, you know, we got, um, Harris and Monty Morris, and we're going to have them for next year. They're only signed through next year, so they have expiring contracts. So that's going to open up that cap space. Of course, if things click and we love them, you know, we can keep them. We can try to re-sign them. And also, um, we can trade them at the trade deadline. So there's lots of things. It's a good maneuver for by the Pistons. I think very good. And I'm not sure that everybody realizes. So... We, we just got to keep focused on the big picture. And the big picture is having a consistently win team that's going to win and go deep in the playoffs for like five or six years in a row. But we're at least a couple years away from that. And again, I think we're a year away from wanting to make any big major moves. So, but what you need to know is the NBA requires you to spend a certain amount of money. So we had to make a move to spend some money. So to get a great shooter like Joe Harris, 
one of the best in the NBA, and to get somebody that's like Monty Morris, and they're both great guys, and to have them on expiring contracts, that is a great way to get our money up. So like the salary cap, you have to spend at least 90% of what the salary cap is. And so, you know, you, you have to find a way. I guess the only penalty is if you don't go up there to the salary cap, then you would have to take the subtracted difference um, between the cap floor and divide it up between the players and give it to the rest current players that are on your team. So anyway, that's the thing. You have to you have to spend the money. And so when we found out, you know, there's no Harrison Barnes and not I'm not sure we wanted him anyway, but then there's no Cam Johnson and who knows, we will never know what Monty knows about his injury history or the person, the player, I, I by all accounts, um, Cameron Johnson's a great guy, so I, I, I don't think that was the problem. But and I, we don't even know if Monty, what influence he had on whether we did it. I just thought that when you know the f- people were first starting to get excited about it, they said, oh, Monty loves him, he loves Monty, and so that would be the reason to sign for him. But there never was a guarantee. You know, everybody's so upset, but th- I, I certainly think they were going to re-sign him, and I think they overpaid him, even though... Um, I, I can't blame them, but I they overpaid him for what what kind of player he is. Even though he's a great, a really good starting player in the NBA, so um, I think that you know there, there's other instances where teams had to spend the money. All of a sudden, like the when the uh, 76ers were tanking and doing their process, they they signed JJ Redick to this really high contract for one year because they had to spend the money. And OKC one year signed this guy foreign player for a, a, I can't remember now, it was a, a large amount of money, like $15 million they gave this guy who hardly played just so they could get up to the, um, the, the cap space, to the salary cap that they had to spend, the money that they had to spend. So a um, couple things, other things is um, we traded their draft rights for Balsa Korbica to the Clippers for – Two point one million dollars. <laughs> so that's interesting, but of course, that's like you know, you know, how in your car you have a bunch of change that's like in a little container that you, whenever you need some change, you you pick up that change. That's that's what two point one million dollars is to Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Clippers. It's nothing. So anyway, they I think they did it so that somehow I don't know all the ramifications that that gave them uh, flexibility, you know. So. We'll see what happens, but the summer league's coming. It's coming in about a week, and it's gonna, I'm really excited about the summer league. And Jared Jack is going to be coaching our team, which is really cool. He's a younger, exciting coach, and I think I'm I was pumped that he's on our staff. And I know we have Buddy Beheim and a lot of guys. I was going to talk about all the guys, but I'm not going to go through their guys. They're just um, guys that we picked up, and n- none of them are really much of any consequence. So one player is um, Tosan and I can't pronounce his name, it's E-V-B-U-O-R-N-W-A-N, and he was from Princeton, he's 22, I think he was a junior, he's 6'8", and we signed him to an Exhibit 10 contract, and so that can be switched over to a two-way contract later on, so it gives you some flexibility, but it has him under contract, then you can use him, but he was, uh, he's a fabulous passer for a 6'8 guy, he, he's pretty tough and strong and he's um he averaged like five assists a game for a forward and i you know in the ncaa tournament they they knocked off a couple good teams princeton you know a small ivy league school that they don't usually go very far but that he he was a big key to that he's not a great shooter he he shot 51 percent from the floor but only 32 percent on threes and um but it was on real low volume so Anyway, he probably, you know, we got so many good young players. He probably, is, it's not probably going to mean anything, but he has got some talent and he is an excellent passer. But we know that um, we got Weissman's going to be there playing and Duran and Ivy probably, only, Ivy and Duran will probably play only one game maybe, but they're down there practicing with Jared Jack. They're putting in Monty's system. The players are learning. Weissman's going to be there. Hopefully he gets, you know, a lot of touches and a lot of, you know, opportunities to play and, you know, I think that Sasser, it's going to be fun watching Sasser play. And, of course, Asar, hopefully he gets to play every game. Sasser and Asar, 
sour a lot of sometimes teams when they got prize rookies they let them play one or two games and if they just even tweak an ankle barely they um take them out so uh let's a couple things i there's a couple new rules um for one thing it's in a, on a trial basis but the flopping thing so if you if the referee determines that you intentionally flopped trying to get a call it's going to be considered kind of like a technical foul. The other, the opponent gets a, a free throw. So anyway, we'll see what happens. That's maybe on just a, a one-year trial, and then maybe it'll be uh, adopted later. But the other thing is that I don't know if this is on a trial basis, but this one only makes sense. I've been just dying that they haven't done this before. Um, you get a second challenge if, it's like in football, if your first challenge is successful, then you get the second. If your first obviously isn't successful, you don't get the second challenge. But it drives, it's, it's really hard when, like in the first quarter, there's an obvious bad call. And so what do you do? Do you challenge it? Yep. And usually, I guess you would if you were sure you were going to win. And then at the end of the game, when the game's on the line and everybody's, you know, a call can swing the game and then then you have no challenge left even though you won your first challenge so anyway that's only common sense and i, I know that uh jeff van gundy he was always adamant he he spent all of his times being cranky on on tv and when he did nba games for espn and he all he did was complain about calls and rules and things like that that was and so you know and, and that's is part of being an announcer, but he didn't spend very much time talking about the game and the strategy and the players, and he spent more, wasted more time being, he'd be angry all the time. Anyway, ESPN has not renewed his contract. They also didn't renew some other people. Neil Ebert, who was there for, been there a hundred years and is an icon at ESPN, but they, they're just cutting costs, I guess. And Susie Kolber, who is, everybody I think enjoys her and likes her, but my sad thing, I think it sounds like they're letting go of Jalen Rose. And Jalen Rose is, I love Jalen Rose. And, you know, I, I think he is smart and he's talented and he's entertaining and he knows basketball and he loves Detroit basketball. And so he, he never was shy hiding his passion for the, the Pistons and the Lions and the t Tigers and any all the Michigan teams. He He's still a diehard Michigan person and it would be sad if he goes because I, I just really enjoyed him so I'm going to do a quick quick rundown of of the free agency so Draymond like I said Harrison Barnes he signed before uh, free agency and that's why we, we didn't have a chance to get him Draymond Green only um, 100 million for four years so that's a low money thing but um He's probably not going to be any good at the end of that contract. I don't know the fourth year if that's guaranteed or not. So that's a lot of these contracts. The last year can be have a player option or a team option. We don't know. But I know Steve Kerr said that they would not be a championship contending team in, unless they brought back Draymond Green. So Kobe White signed for the Bulls. He was always in trade rumors, but three years, $40 million, he can... He likes to shoot, but he's he's got some talent. Kuzma was a big one. Kyle Kuzma signed four years, 102 million with uh, the Wizards to stay there. So they, they, again, they, you know, they got to pay somebody. They got to spend the money on somebody. And but I again, I think the Wizards are the one team that they got the new um, uh, general manager and president that are I think finally going to try to commit to a tank. I think they probably will be the number one team that's going to tank going into the year. You know, the Pistons aren't going to tank. I will be upset if they try to tank, but I still think if we try hard to win and we do really well and, and we get up to 35 wins, 32 wins, again, that would be a 15-game increase, improvement, and that's very rare. But even that the team that finished with 38 wins, they still got a top 10 pick last year. So, you know, we could have one more year because I don't think after that we'll ever get a top 10 pick because I think we're going to be too good. So, but Kuzma, anyway, he he's a good, really good player and he's from Flint and he, he's getting $102 million over four years. And so that's a lot of money and a lot of people were surprised at that though. Torian Prince signed with the Lakers. The Lakers got four pretty good players for not very much money. So, again, I'm not the biggest Laker fan, but he signed for one year for four and a half million. Um, Levert from Michigan, Karis Levert, he got a two-year, $32 million to sign back with the Cavs. 
Some people want him to come to the Pistons. I'm not one of them. He doesn't play great defense, but he doesn't shoot a good percentage, and he likes to shoot a lot. So Damian Lee signed with the Suns for just, I think, one-year deal, real cheap. Uh, Tyrese Maxey uh, can't – they didn't – they chose not to extend him yet. The Harden has not been traded yet, and James Harden has been going to be four teams in four years that the beard's been shuffled around and – you know, he, he I, I don't know if he, what his self-awareness is, you know, he, why he can't stay in a place that, you know, when, when you go four different places and you're not happy, any of the four places, do you at any point realize that maybe it's me and not them? Bruce Brown was a big surprise. So Bruce Brown is getting $45 million and for two years. The second year is not guaranteed as club option. So it's really cool, though, because he, in his first the, all throughout the beginning of his career, the Pistons drafted him in the second round years ago, and he o he's only made like 15 million, 15 million in his entire career, and now he's getting paid two years, 45 million. So good for him. He's a winning player that any team would want on their team. Jeremy Grant, a lot of you wanted him. I'm sure glad we didn't sign him to this contract. Five years, 160 million. Again, we don't know what the last year of the contract is, but that's like 32 million a year. He's a really good player, but he's not a superstar player. We got to find out who is Cade that player. You know, Jeremy Grant is not that player. Jeremy Grant is a great role player, second, third, or fourth score, leading scorer on a real good team, but he's not. You know, not going to be the cornerstone of your franchise. So. Javon Carter, I mentioned him that he's, I think Sasser reminds him he signed with the Bulls for three years, $20 million. He's tough, hard-nosed, plays tough defense, can shoot the three. Reggie Jackson, our boy Reggie Jackson that played for the Pistons, he had some great years with the Clippers, but then now he, he's bounced around a little bit. He's with Denver. They surprised, they paid him um, two years, $10 million. Not even sure why he wasn't playing much. George uh, Yang, Three years, twenty-six million to the Cavs. He was with the Sixers. I think he's the guy that uh, gave Bogey a real cheap shot. It was a flagrant. It was bad. So I, I don't, I don't like that guy. But anyway, the Sixers. They, I mean, the Cavs. They needed some wing help. Um, Kyrie. Again, Kyrie has no self-awareness. He's signed three years. Dallas is smart, but he, Kyrie has the third year as a player option, and for lots of money, twenty-six. Um, I mean, $126 million he signs for. So they were really painted into corner. They really had no options. But Middleton, there's a lot of speculation about where he could go and what he could do, but he signed a kind of a team-friendly deal, but not in my opinion. It was three years, $102 million, still an enormous amount of money, and he has always he's been hurt so much the last three years. And so... Um, uh, Jakob Pertl signed, resigned up with the uh, Raptors. They gave away a first-round draft pick. He's a center, real talented, block shots, can't shoot free throws, but he signed $80 million. Um, like I said, the Cam Johnson trade, that is, you know, $27 million a year, and he's a real good player, but we'll, it'll be interesting. I, I liked him, and I think he's going to be real good, but I, I think it, in the, in hindsight, I think is is we're going to find out that we're better off. We'll see what happens at the end of next year, where we're at, and we still, like I said, we just need to find out where that is. Surprisingly, Gabe Vincent from Miami signed with the Lakers, three years, $33 million. Uh, Yuta Wanambi, the Guy that I talked about, the Pistons getting the six nine that can shoot the three really well. The I guess the Suns players Durant and Booker and those guys recruited him to come to the Suns, and they, he got a real team friendly contract. And uh, Shooter got signed um, with Toronto because they lost they lost um, Fred Van Fleet. So we're going to talk about that in a second. So. Um, yeah, let's talk about Fred Van Fleet. So he, he was undrafted. This guy that's undrafted, he um, signed a three-year, $130 million contract, max contract, undrafted player, the only, only undrafted player in history that ever signed for close to that. And he, so that's over $40 million a year. And the, the funny thing is he, his first contract, he signed for $540 Five hundred forty thousand dollars was his first contract. Next year, he is going to be making five hundred twenty-five 
thousand dollars a game. <laughs> He's going to be making as much in every game than he made in his whole first season. So good for him. I, I again, I don't like I don't like the Rockets for whatever reason. I still don't know what they're going to do with all their minutes, how they're going to split, who touches the ball, how much, and but he will improve their culture. He and and they have they needed somebody like him to. Uh, connect everybody and bring everybody together, and I think that, unfortunately, I, like I said, I'm not I'm not a fan of theirs, so I don't want them to be good. But he, I think, is gonna he's a winning player. So, Cam Reddish, who was often rumored to come to the Pistons, he signed a two-year deal with the Lakers for not very much money, but the second year is a player option. So if he hits it and has a great year, he first year he can be a free agent again. Rui Hashimura. Um, that was with the Wizards. He's with the Lakers this last year. He signed three years, $51 million. Seth Curry, great shooter. He signed with the Mavs, two-year deal. Max Struess, four-year deal with um, $63 million. And he was one of those Miami players that really made a difference. But I, I got up at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I looked at my phone, and I saw Twitter, and I wanted to see, just, oh, did anybody make a trade? And it, I don't know if it was really from Woj or not, but... Adrian Wojnarowski that works for ESPN, it, it said it was from him, but it, it said, what are you still doing up? And so I, that was funny, Woj. But anyway, share this podcast with a friend. Tell them about it if they're a Piston fan. And um, if you're listening on YouTube, subscribe and like it and put it on your notifications. And if you're listening on Spotify, leave a five-star review. Do something great for somebody today. Make their day. And Go Pistons.